Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, I am the founder and CEO of Daughter of Increase Ministries, that is DOI Ministries. And here on this channel, I help you guys to increase in your faith and relationship with God in Christ through Bible studies, book reviews, discussions, and more. And I do that by posting twice a week, every Wednesday and Saturday, and occasionally on Tuesday so if you have not done so already don't forget to subscribe like this video and click the bell to stay notified so we are back for vlogmas day 14 I believe it is y'all I'm um, forgetting these days my brain yeah but day 14 if I'm not mistaken and as the title says this is going to be my anticipated reads for 2020 and so I do have them popped here on my tablet because I had to really like go through and figure it out um I know for a fact there are two books that are not listed anywhere because there is no set date but I know from the authors themselves from either previous releases or from their Instagrams that they're coming out in 2023 and so the first one of course is Miss Tessa Afshar she has a novel coming out in 2023 I know this because in the hidden print at the end of her book um, it just says that new release coming fall 2023. So she has a book coming out 2023. Don't care what it is. I just know I'm excited for it. That's it. Y'all know Miss Hester Afshar, anything she writes, anything she does, she can come out with a play and I'm getting it. Okay. Um, she is by far one of my favorite, one of my favorite biblical fiction authors. She is top tier number one for me. Um, like hands out and I know I said that I think I'm gonna do my tier ranking uh for her novels I'm just gonna do it it's one it's gonna be one of my videos it might be for day 15 it might be for day like 27 I don't know but we're gonna make that a thing because I need to do that I need to because her books bomb.com got them all so we're gonna make that a thing somewhere within blogmas um so yeah but definitely her book for next year don't know what it's called don't know what it's about but whatever it is I know I'm gonna love it and so we're getting it um also miss morgan l bussy one of my favorite christian fantasy authors she's coming out with a, a christian fantasy viking novel don't know when it's coming out i know about it from her instagram so yeah i think she is either finishing up the draft or she's completed the draft or she's in the editing process of the draft one of the one of those but i know it's coming um she had just finished her duology on um secrets in the mist i forgot i think it's sky world duology i think that's what it's called she just did the the final book in that duology read that and um yeah she's coming out with a viking duology so i am excited for that excited for that so whenever that comes out we'll be reading that book but those two were not listed anywhere like on goodreads or any websites that i could find even on their actual website you can't find any information for those releases so yeah, I haven't checked the actual, like, publisher's websites, which I probably should have did, but, yeah, that, that's all I have for that. But, going on, these are in no particular order. I literally just went on Goodreads. Goodreads has their, what is it called? Their most anticipated Christian fictions 2023 list, a part of their Listopia listing. I'll leave it linked down below for you all to check out. But, I literally just went on that list and started looking at the the, the books and um I just started voting and putting my list together so my list right now has a total of 13 books um plus the two that I mentioned previous so this is a list of 15 so obviously Tessa Afshaw would be the first one that I mentioned and then the one from Morgan L. Bussey is my second pick um I can't insert pictures for those because there's no photos for those but the rest of them I will insert photos for you all and I will try to read the information i don't want to read too much information because i don't want this video to be too long right but um it's a good mix good mix we got some biblical fiction we got some fantasy we got some suspense we got some thrillers we got some romances we got a good mix going we got a good mix going and so in no particular order i'm just going to read them in the way that i saw them on the list and go from there so the first one is the vanishing castle the vanishing at castle moreau by miss jamie joe Wright. let me just let you know i pre-ordered this already um i pre-ordered this when i heard it was coming out number one and second thing i do have a net galley e arc of it and most of these i have net galley e arcs of already <laughs> have i read most of these yet 
I told y'all in my goals video, if you haven't seen that, I am terrible with my net galley E arcs. So we're working on that, but I'm going to just say, if I have a net galley E arc, I will say that I do and let you guys know if I read it or not, but most likely I have not. Um, this one I have not read yet. I want to read it. Will I read it? Don't know. Um, so this comes out April 4th. 2022 2023 oh my god um and it's published by bethany house and this is a christian gothic mystery and i'm excited for it and so this follows um an orphaned woman or young lady a woman named daisy francois um in 1865 and then a young girl or woman named cleo clemens um in the present day and so yeah it says in 1865 orphan daisy francois takes a position as a housemaid at a midwestern wisconsin castle and finds that the reclusive and eccentric gothic authoress inside hides more than the harrowing tales in her novels with women disappearing from the area and alleging that seems to parallel these eerie circumstances daisy is thrust into a web that may threaten to steal her sanity if not her life in the present day, Cleo Clemens is hired by the grandson of American aristocratic family, the Trim Trimbleys, to help his matriarchal grandmother face her hoarding in this in the dilapidated castle Moreau. But when Cleo uncovers more than just the woman's stashes of collectibles, a century-old mystery of disappearances, insanity, and dusty and the dust of the old castle's curse threatens to rise again and this time leave no one alive to tell its sordid tale. So this draws readers into a seamlessly woven dual time tale of suspense, mystery, romance, and redemption. So yeah, anything Jamie writes, I'm I'm sorry y'all. It it just it gives life, right? And I've read like two of her novels. I own all of her books. And do I regret anything? Not at all. Not at all. Have I loved the books that I've read? most definitely um will i continue to get anything that she writes most definitely um so yeah we had that so the next thing is yesterday's tides by rosanna m white and i do have also a e galley of this from net galley this comes out january 24th 2023 it is from bethany house publishers this is a christian historical fiction romance and um when it comes to Rosanna M. White, I don't remember the name of the first novel that I read from her. Let me see. Um, it was The Codebreakers, I think it was. I'm looking right now on Goodreads, so pay me no mind. It was, yeah, The Codebreakers was the first trilogy I read from her. And then I got The Secrets of the Isles, and then I also have Dreams of Savannah, um, I haven't read her biblical fiction yet, which is A Stray Drop of Blood, which I do want to read. Um, but yeah, I am no stranger to her writing. It's beautiful. Um, and so anything that she writes, I typically do want to read. And so I am ecstatic for this one. This is set in 1942. It follows Evie Farrow. Um, I think that's how you say her name. Um, she is used to life on some island uh, is on the screen can't pronounce it uh where every day is the same until the german u-boats haunting their waters begin to wreak havoc um and then decades earlier in 1914 there's an englishman remington colberth um who arrives at the whatever inn um but he doesn't count on falling in love with louisa adair so yeah I don't know. It just sounds interesting. That's all I'm going to say. You got German agents. Great war. Yeah, we just going to go with it. That it, it, it sounds interesting. It's Rosanna and White. I like her writing. So that's why I'm excited for that one. Um, then we have one from Miss Nicole DC. And so I own all of her novels. Let me just say that. I do. I own every last one of her books. Um, well, not every last one. I own her books that she had published right with I believe is this Bethany that she worked with I believe it was Bethany let me double check that yes with Bethany house so I have all of her books that she has published with Bethany um so I have before I called you mine love that book five stars um I have all that really matters and the sequel to that book um and I feel like there was another book that she did 
but this is the next book coming out um it's coming out april 11th also published by bethany house this is a obviously christian fiction i'm not sure i believe this will be a contemporary romance it doesn't really say here but um it says as a senior acquisitions editor for fog harbor books in san francisco ingrid erickson has rejected many a manuscript for a lack of defined conflict and dramatic irony two elements her current life possesses in spades in the months following the death of her childhood best friend and international best-selling author cc campbell ingrid has not only lost her ability to escape into fiction due to a rare trauma response but she's also desperate to find the closure she is convinced will come with Cece's missing manuscript. After an editorial meeting jeopardizes Ingrid's career, she fears her future will remain irrevocably, irrevocably broken. But when Joel, or I don't know if it's Joel or Joel, but I'm gonna say Joel Campbell, <laughs> who shattered her belief in Happily Ever Afters, offers her a sealed envelope from Cece, his late cousin asking them to put their differences aside and retrieve a package in their coastal Washington hometown, Ingrid must confront a package. I'm sorry. Ingrid must confront a past riddled with secrets before she can discover the true healing she's been searching for. The acclaimed author of Before I Called You Mine and All That Really Matters delivers a poignant and intriguing contemporary tale of friendship, forgiveness, and a love that goes beyond the pages. And so this seems to be strictly a contemporary that just has a little bit of romance to it and so yeah i love nicole's writing her writing just it grips you it is deep um she hits on some really important topics and it's not over the top like the romances are there but they're not like in your face like oh my god romance 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 um i love it it's beautiful and so i am excited for that release the next is um a book by miss jocelyn green and jocelyn green is an author i have a few of her books um and quite a few of her e-arcs okay um oh and i did not mention but i do have the e-arc of the words be lost okay i also have an e-arc of the metropolitan fair um this is the first book in on this on central park by jocelyn green um obviously historical christian fiction this has a little bit of um, romance and mystery to it this is coming out march 14th published by bethany house of course and um honestly i love the cover the cover is just like screaming class it's screaming you know old school it's screaming historical it's giving the vibe right i love it um so this says for years her explorer father promised dr lauren westlake she'd accompany him on one of his egyptian expeditions but as the empty promises mountain lauren determined to earn her own lauren determined to own earn her own way now the assistant curator of the Ept egyptology excuse me I'm probably saying that word wrong, for the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Laura receives two unexpected invitations. The first is her repentant father's offer to finally bring her to Egypt as his colleague on a new expedition. The second is a chance to enter the world of the New York's wealthiest patrons, patrons who have been victims of art fraud. That sounds really, really good. So, you have something about the discovery of King Tut's tomb, a detective named Joe. Um, ooh, okay, all right, all right. So it says, in this rich 1920s tale, best-selling author Jocelyn Green invites you into one of New York City's most esteemed museums where a young woman discovers secrets, betrayal, and romance. Ooh, we like that. And um, I love the Metropolitan Museum um so yeah that's going to be really really fun to read following that we have another novel by miss rosanna and white because we just we love her writing i do and i feel like i'm just going to get anything she writes it is what it is and so this is going to be a new i don't know if it's a trilogy she's going to be writing um but it's the imposters uh this the first book is called a beautiful disguise it's going to be coming out august 22nd obviously from bethany house i don't know what it is i just like books published by bethany house quite often um but yeah the cover stunning beautiful i love the lush greenery but with that pop of lavender y'all know lavender as y'all can see is my color but um yeah gorgeous so it says left with an, left with an estate on the brink of bankruptcy after their father's death lady marigold fairfax 
and her brother opened a private investigation firm marketed to the elite to spy on the elite. Ooh. Dubbed the imposters, their anonymous group soon becomes the go-to for the creme of society when they want answers delivered. But the many secrets Marigold learns about her peers pale in comparison to her shock when she and her brother are hired to investigate her best friend's father as a potential traitor. Ooh. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I'm not going to read any more information because I don't want this like to be too long. But um, yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Um, and it says about 400 pages. So it says Lady Marigold is determined to discover the truth for her friend's sake. And she's more determined still to keep her heart from getting involved with the enigmatic new clients who can't possibly be as noble as he seems. So this new new client is sir merritt livingstone um who is a part of the war office intelligence division so ooh, germany as well i noticed that miss rosanna and white writes a lot about like um german spies so yeah we have that so that is that um moving on to the next book okay so we have code name edelweiss by miss Stan stephanie lantham um, and this is a historical fiction based on World War II, um, and this is coming out March 7th. This is published by Tyndall House, and first of all, her covers by Stephanie Lansom, beautiful. I love her biblical fiction novels. Their covers are stunning, but this one, oh, it's about Adolf, Adolf Hitler. Mm, mm, mm. Right. So it says Adolf Hitler is still a distant rumble on the horizon, but a Jewish spy master and his courageous spies uncover a storm of Nazi terror in their own backyard. So in the summer of 1933, a man named Adolf Hitler is the new and powerful anti-Semitic chancellor of Germany. But in Los Angeles, a no-nonsense secretary, Liesl Wise, I think that's how you say that, uh, has concerns much closer to home. The Great Depression is tightening its grip and Lysol is the sole supporter of two children, an opinionated mother and a troubled brother. Um, so Leon Lewis is a Jewish lawyer who has watched Adolf Hitler's rise to power. Um, Lysol loses her job at MGM. Her only choice is to work with Leon Lewis and the mysterious Agent 13 to spy on her friends and neighbors. Ooh, code name Edelweiss is based on a true story unknown until recent years. How a lone Jewish lawyer and a handful of amateur spies discovered and foiled Adolf Hitler's plan to take over Hollywood. Interesting. I'm excited for that. So we have that. Um, moving on, we have Daughter of Eden. This is Eve's story written by Jill Eileen Smith. Now, y'all know I have a hit or miss love with uh, Miss Jill Eileen Smith. Some books are straight up hits for me and others are straight misses. And so I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about this one. I did read, um, oh, do I have it on my shelf? Hava by Miss Toskali. Um, love that book so much. It was stunning. Okay. Um, and that was pretty much the story of Eve from Tosca's point of view top tier top tier i know i want to read eve by um william paul the author of the shack he got a book he has a novel called eve i want to read that by him but um this is going to be a biblical christian by joe eileen smith and um yeah this is coming out in february 14th uh valentine's day book and it's coming out by rebel so it says the first time she opens her eyes eve gazes on one whose beauty nearly blinds her, whose breath is in her lungs. Her creator takes her hand and gives her to one like her, yet different. Together, she and Adam experience pure joy as they explore Eden, but her favorite moments are when the creator comes to walk with them day after day. Until everything changes. With one act of disobedience, Eve finds that her world is no longer a friendly place. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I am interested... I don't know. It has a 3.67 star rating right now. I do have an e arc, so I'm assuming the people that read this have read the e arcs. Um, actually, it actually has a five star rating so far, and a four star rating, and one two star. So I don't know. I'm interested to see what this is about. I, like I said, I do have an e arc. Um, so I had an e arc of this one, and I also had an e arc of Codename Edelweiss. 
and um yeah so that is that the next book also a biblical fiction is in feast or famine this is by misu andrews this is the second book in the egyptian chronicles the first one was um um potiphar's wife which i did enjoy quite often uh, quite often quite a lot i did enjoy that one um and so this is coming out may 9th this is published by waterbrook press and um yeah this is thrust into an arranged marriage the daughter of ancient Egy ancient egypt's high priest plays a pivotal role in joseph's biblical narrative in this powerful novel from award-winning author of potiphar's wife and so after four-year-old Asenath's mother is murdered by Egypt's foreign rulers. The child is raised to be a priestess by her overprotective father, high priest of Egypt's sun god. For 15 years, Asenath, I think this As Asenath, it's on the screen, <laughs> is sequestered in the upper levels of Ra's temple, convinced it is her destiny to heal the land by becoming queen to the next Egyptian pharaoh. But when Egypt's foreign king instead gives her as a bride to a newly appointed vizier, a Hebrew named Joseph, her entire world is shaken. Beyond the walls of her tower, Asenath discovers treachery, deceit, and conspiracy that forces her to redefine her destiny and weigh where her true loyalty lies. Can she still trust the gods of Egypt, or is Elohim, the foreign god of her husband, the one who will heal her nation during the feast and famine to come? So, I love Miss Misu Andrew. She is definitely one of my favorite biblical fiction authors. And so I'm excited for this. I did, like I said, enjoy the story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife. And so I am quite interested to dive into the sequel and pick that up when it releases. So we have that. I am hoping to be a part of the launch team for this because I was a part of the launch team for Potiphar's wife. Well, I, actually, I am a part of the launch team for this, but I haven't heard much um since then so i will be reaching out to find out more about that to see if that's still a thing um and if it is i will obviously have an e arc to read and then we'll be reading that so we have that all right moving on we have yet again another biblical fiction and this one is by miss connie van cassette and i am so excited so 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 excited for her to be back to writing um, she wasn't feeling too well. If you know, you know. If you don't know, um, I would say follow her on her social media to hear her story and her journey. Um, but she did have, uh, something that she had gone through. Um, and she, she openly talks about it. I don't really want to divulge because sometimes I feel weird divulging other people's, like, medical situations. And so definitely check out her Facebook, her, um, Instagram to hear more about it. But, um... I would just say keep your prayers up for her as far as her health is concerned. But um, yes, she has Voice of the Ancient coming out and I am so excited. This is the first book in the King's Men. And um, yes, so this is coming out April 15th. Um, it is published by Bethany, of course. And y'all know I love Miss Connie Lynn. She is my second favorite author, a uh, biblical fiction author, of course. And so this one says, as the eldest son of a Levite and a Philistine, um, Avedon, I think that's how you say that, is torn between his duty to his family legacy and the desire for something more. When Ammonites attacked the city of Gilead, because it's another word before that, <laughs> um, he takes the opportunity to fight with his cousins for the newly crowned king, Saul. But when one of his cousins or one of the cousins goes missing during the battle, Avedon stays behind to search for him in hopes that he's still alive. Oh, wait, wait, does this coincide with another one? Oh, see, and this is one thing I love. Connie's books always intertwine. So this is why people ask me, well, how should they read? I always recommend that you read her books in order. You don't have to necessarily, but I feel like because all of her characters are intertwined, like you see generations of generations, generations from other characters in the next series, I would say read them in order. But, um... Kizia is the daughter of one of the most powerful clan chiefs in the territory of Manasseh. On the brink of a forced marriage to a loathsome man decades older than her, she has no choice but to run. Dressed as a boy, she takes her horse and heads for the south, hoping to find sanctuary from sanctuary with her mother's family. And so I'm sure that these two meet, fall in love, blah, 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 blah. I'm excited, and it's about King Saul reign. Um, so yeah, I'm interested. 
to see what that is about when that comes out so yes we have that um the next book we have is going to be cold pursuit by miss nancy mel and we love miss nancy okay i am a fan of miss nancy i have read the chronicle files trilogy enjoyed it a lot i have read the kelly quinn um profiler trilogy adore that trilogy right and i do plan to go back and read more of her trilogies um but this one comes out july 11th i'm not sure who is publishing this at all let's see bethany house is publishing this of course um this is about an ex-fbi profiler we love it um named river ryland who suffers from ptsd after a case went horribly wrong um she needs a fresh start so she moves to st louis to be near her ailing mother and opens a private investigation firm with her friend and former fbi partner tony st Clair. um they're soon approached by a grieving mother who wants to who wants them to find out what happened to her teenage son who disappeared four years ago um so yeah i'm sure that there is going to be a lot of deep dark secrets some romance between mr tony and miss river um so i'm excited for this miss nancy her writing is amazing it's it's thrilling it keeps you on your toes and the cover looks this cover reminds me of the covers from the kaylee quinn profiler trilogy so i like that and so i'm excited for that okay so moving on we have um the love script by miss tony shiloh and so i adored the oloro ile duology i wish it was a trilogy just saying but i love that duology so much and so i am definitely looking forward to the love script um this is the first book in love in the spotlight it's contemporary christian fiction obviously coming out august 1st published by bethany of course um <laughs> the cover is so cute i love it it reminds me of how a lot of the contemporary romances look in the secular world um with that sort of like character look with the wording on it and like minimal detailing really like that um i i love everything about this cover it's just stunning to me but um it says hollywood hairstylist nevaeh richards loves making those in the spotlight shine but prefers the anonymy i probably said that wrote wrong whatever of staying behind her stylish chair where no one notices her but when a photo of Nevea and hollywood heartthrob lamont booker goes viral for all the wrong reasons her quiet life becomes the number one trending topic lamont booker's bold faith has gained him a platform and the authenticity of his faith is well known until tabloids cause the world to question everything he claims to be with his reputation on the line he finds himself hearing out his agents push for a fake relationship something he never thought he had considered in a million years and so i'm assuming it's going to be a fake romance turned real between the two of these people and i am excited there is something something about the way that tony writes romances and for me as a obvious woman of color i love that tony really connects with women of color and her romances right if you read the oloro ile duology you know what i mean right it's rich it's deep like she holds nothing back and the faith aspects are there so i have high hopes <laughs> for this right but i'm also going to try not to have high hopes for this right because i don't want to go into this thinking it's going to be the same as like in search of a prince or to win a prince like because it's not going to be the same right but I do have high hopes for the faith aspects, especially if Lamont Booker is the one who has more faith. I, I don't want to go in expecting him to be like a Brie from In Search of a Prince, but I am expecting some faith to, to be there, like some prayer, some strong faith moments. Like we're, we're, we're looking for that. And so I'm excited. I'm excited. And I cannot wait for this to release. So following that, we have... The Weight of Air by Miss Kimberly Duffy. This comes out February 7th, again, by Bethany House. Sorry, Bethany House. <laughs> um, historical fiction. This, uh, the first of all, the cover is stunning to me. Absolutely gorgeous. I love it, and it's giving the circus vibes. And I haven't read many circus novels. 
um, especially that are Christian based. I read some that are like fantasy in the secular world back there. Um, but I want to read some that are in the Christian genre, right? And so this one is set in 1911 and it follows Mabel McGinnis. Um, she is Europe's strongest woman and has performed beside her father in the Manzo Brothers Circus her entire life. But as his unexpected death, she loses everything she's ever known and, and sets off in the company of acrobat Jake Cunningham for America in hope of finding the mother she's just discovered is alive. Isabel Moreau, the nation's most feted aerialist, has given everything to the circus, but age and in injury now threaten her security and Isabel, stalked by old fears, make a choice that risks everything. But when her daughter, Mabel, appears alongside the man who never wanted to see Isabel Isabella again, Isabella is forced to face the truth of where and in what she derives her worth. Interesting. This sounds like it's going to be a hard-hitting one. Oh, and you got something about the circus at the Madison Square Garden. Oh, I'm interested in this for sure. So we have that. And then the last one I have on here um, is, oh, I forgot to mention, see, forgetting. I do have an arc of the weight of air. Um, and so last one I also have an arc of is The Broker of Lies by Stephen James. This one is a, I don't know, this is a thriller, suspense, something along those lines, mystery. Um, this is coming out April 11th. It is published by Tyndall House. Um, I don't think I have any novels written by T Stephen James, like at all. I think this is like a new to me author. Um, but this one says, the man who knows all our secrets has a secret of his own. When Travis Brock, a high level Pentagon redactor with an idiot memory <laughs> finds a clue to solving the tragic arson that took his wife from him he risks everything to find the truth and chances losing himself in the process with a terror attack looming on her rising a pair of assassins on his tail brock drops off the grid and joins forces with the disavowed homeland security operative together they race to stop the attack before brock is neutralized by the people he trusts the most from critically acclaimed best-selling novelist Stephen James comes a smart, wire type and emotionally resonant and emotionally resonant thriller that asks just how far across the line we might go to see justice carried out. And so I do have an e arc of this, and I'm so excited to dive into this book. So those are all 15 books that I know that I'm excited for for 2023 there might be more added to the list I don't know but if you want to see like I said the listing of all the books coming out Christian fictions um the link is down below for Goodreads I do use Goodreads to track my reading personally that's just me um I personally have been tracking it on my personal account but I do have a, an account specifically for DOI as well um so i'll leave both my i have both my accounts linked down below so if you want to follow just my christian books at me on um at my daughter of increase account if you want to see all the books that i read from my christian fictions to my secular novels at my personal account um but yeah i'm excited for all of these i cannot wait to read all of these and like i said i'm finding new authors like stephen james for me is a new author and the fact that they say that he's a national best-selling author makes me want to see more of his books I want to read more of his books and see. He has quite a few books on this list, like quite a few. Yeah, quite a few books, and he is a Christian author. So I'm definitely going to give more authors a try. I'm going to continue looking at this list um, to see, because right now they have a total of 112 books on this list. Um, so yeah. They have some books by Ronnie Kendig on this list, which I I enjoy Ronnie Kendig, but I don't really like find myself gravitating toward her books too often, which is why I didn't put her on my list per se to read. Um, honestly, let's see what else. They have Elizabeth Goldard on here. They have Laura France on here. They have Lynette Eason, Jen Serrano, um, Natalie Walters on here. They have Lynn H. Blackburn, Elizabeth. Oh, they have Elizabeth Camden. See, I forgot. Hearts of Steel. I want to read that. This is the Blackstone Legacy, um, the third book coming out. See, I was not paying attention to that. I'm not even going to read the information for that, but the information is on the screen about when it's released and who it's by. I want to read that. I love Miss Elizabeth Camden. Her novels are amazing, and I do have an e-arc of that. But, um, 
yeah see i am finding a lot more authors on here that i didn't really pay attention to they have joey headlong on here jennifer Darvel on here danny petri on here kimberly woodhouse another book by jennifer i mean elizabeth godard on here another book by elizabeth uh, Lynette Eason say so they have a lot of books I just I'm very particular about the authors that I'm going to put on here just because I know who I'll pick up immediately and who I'll say I want to read and probably won't ever read no time soon so that's that for this video post up this book stack here so I know you read so I know you read lord help me <laughs> so I know you watched to the end of this video I'm gonna continue reading y'all I have a migraine going so when I have migraines, my brain is not computing correctly, nor am I thinking properly. And so, not reading, but I'm going to continue drinking <laughs> my coffee. And um, I'm going to go edit this video so that it can be posted. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye!